I was 12 when I decided I wanted to be an engineer. And at the age of 14, I started following motorsport. My sister was 11 at the time. And we got hooked on it because of two guys, Murray Walker and James Hunt. They were the commentators who at the time were giving quite a lot of information out about the technology and about the cars themselves. And we realized quite quickly that actually you could become an engineer in motorsport. There was never anything on the TV that told us that we had to do that. But having done a bit of research in the background, we realized that it was a career that was possible for us. In November 2006, I was talking to Audi, um, and that was uh, about a support role in what's called the American Le Mans series. Um, up to this point, my only contact with Audi Sport had been in June 2006 at Le Mans. That's the, year, the time of year that the race runs uh, for the 24 hours. And I'd seen the outfit, and it was huge. Um, very spectacular from the outside, unlike anything I'd seen with any of the private teams. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be really cool to go and work for them? And seven months later, I was. In 2008, I was very fortunate to be on the winning crew at Le Mans. And that, I guess, is what pushed me forward um, to wanting to become a race engineer. During the middle of 2010, I became a race engineer. I was promoted into one. So now, alongside all of my other activities, helping out the test team, and being involved at the races as an assistant engineer looking at data and the strategy and everything, I was now responsible for this group of people. A typical race engineer at Audi has eight mechanics working for them, one assistant engineer, one data engineer, two engine engineers, a gearbox engineer, three or four, maybe even more background staff and engineers, three drivers to handle, and then the last one, the management, the people who oversee what's going on across our cars, because we take more than one car to Le Mans. The hardest of those jobs has to be um, managing the last two. Drivers can be like kids, and it is like being a kindergarten teacher. And the management side of things, everyone wants to win, and they always want their car to win. But these guys have to handle three cars, and they have to put forward the best place car to make sure we are guaranteed a win. So sometimes you have decisions go against you. Prior to Le Mans last year, I'd done five races with Audi Sport as a race engineer. And I'd had some varying results, shall we say. Some of them were good. Some of them were really bad. And it was real, real character building, a real eye-opener. But it was the best possible preparation I could have had for Le Mans last year. It was the 79th anniversary of the race last year. We took three cars to Le Mans. I could stand here all day and tell you how we started preparing from the day after the 2010 race, and you wouldn't really be that interested after I finished because it could take a long time. What I do have for you is a video that Audi Sport produced after the race, which documents what we went through as a team and what it meant to me personally and to my crew. Time pressure is 1.55 then. The information there, front tyre 15. Oh my goodness me, another prop for the 22. The 50th car has been hit by a prototype and the wheel from the prototype is in among the... And it's one of the Audis, it's, it's the number three car. It's Magnitia's car. Alan, are you OK? Safety car, safety car. Windows, one of our car will crash. Copy that, Ben. Timo, the safety car is caused by Alan. Alan is okay. Alan is okay. The night is long in Le Mans. After the sun has set, the track shows all its mythical beauty. The adrenaline keeps you awake. The race is getting on everyone's mind. 91.2 FM, if you're uh, with us here at the racetrack, you are uh, witnessing history, the 79th running of the 24 hour of day after the race, we had a press release which pretty much said everything we had achieved, the 10th victory for Audi, fastest lap, pole position, the race win, 
first Swiss man ever to win the race, the least amount of fuel used um, per 100 kilometers by any race team. And perhaps the most significant reason, perhaps why I'm here, I became the first woman to engineer and lead a car to the race win at Le Mans. I just want to thank you for listening to what I had to say. Um, I hope it gives you a bit of an insight into motorsport, but mainly into engineering and how it affects your everyday life and how important it actually is. Thank you.